Boker Tov. Today's stop is Daflamid. Daflamid in Kedushin. We're approaching, by the way, the halfway point in Shas. The halfway point in Shas. Sometime next week, I think it is sometime next week, we will hit the halfway point in terms of pages in Shas. Meaning we're, since we started a couple of years ago, we're going to be halfway through. Mr. Shem next week. We'll point it out, Mr. Shem. Okay, so we're, we're, we're learning again for first line for Los Ben Rum and Yosef Sriya Ben Chaim Michal. We're at the two dots, about eight, nine lines down of the page. So we talked about the Mishnah that the Mishnah said, the first part of the Mishnah was talking about what is a father responsible to do for his son? Those mitzvahs is for a father, not for a mother. For example, to give him a bris milah, to be po to him, the Bryce has said, <laughs> and to teach him Torah, to marry him off, and to teach him a craft. Now, we were talking about teaching him Torah. How far does teaching Torah go? How far do you have to go? Would you just teach your son's Torah? What about grandchildren? I don't know if you go in Zvulun ben Dan. This is not the Zvulun in the Torah or the Dan in the Torah. This is somebody who lived at their time. Zvulun ben Dan, Shalimdo Avi Aviv, his grandfather taught him. To show that's an example. This person, Zvulun ben Dan, was taught by his grandfather, Mikra, Mishnah, Chumash, Mishnayis, Talmud, Gemara, Halachos, Halachal Maisa, Agaras, stories, homiletics. Uh, so that's how far you have to teach your grandson. Uh, we learn like this. We have a price which says, Lomdu Mikra. If you taught him Chumash, Aim Lomdu Mishnah. You don't have to teach him Mishnayis. Chumash is not. Amrav Mikra Zu Torah. Torah Rashi says means the Torah, the basic Torah, the Chamisha Chumshet Torah. We call Chumash, Taras Moshe, not Nevim Ksubim. That's all you have to teach him. The answer is because Vulm Bedev Lokzum Dead. Well, we mean to say, you teach him when we said, how far does he have to go, like Zvon ben Dan, whose grandfather taught him everything, including Gemara, etc.? Uh, no, we don't mean to go that far. Because Zvon ben Dan, Shalim Dov, you have to go as far as Zvon as, as ben Dan, who was taught by his grandfather. And his under grandfather has an obligation to teach basic Torah, even to his grandson. Below Zvon ben Dan, as far as Zvon ben Dan, the Iluhasa, make a mission of Talmud HaChaz HaGadas. Zvon ben Dan's grandfather taught him everything. But the basic idea is the least teacher grandson Chumash. Does it really say that a grandfather is mechliv to teach his grandson Torah? But Tanya, we learn the limanat hamasavas benechem. The limanat ham rather. The limanat hamasavas benechem. Part of in Vayim Shmuel, which is every day, twice a day at least. The limanat hamasavas benechem. Below benei benechem. You must teach your sons. There's no mitzvah to teach your grandchildren. Mani mekayim v'odatam v'venechem v'venechem. The pasuk goes on and says. In, in Baruchan it says, and you will make it known to your sons and to your grandsons. If you're not mechuyi to teach your grandsons, how are you going to make it known to them? Lo melcha, the teacher shall come lamedus for Torah. If you teach your son Torah, malav a kosev kil lamdo. If you teach your son Torah, you, the, the Torah considers that if you taught him lamdo lo ulav no ulav ben benar sab kol doras. If you teach your son Torah, it's as if you taught all the generations that are going to follow because he's going to teach his son and so on and so forth. So, uh, so what do you see over here? That there's no chiv to teach your grandson. How do we say over here, how far do you have to go? Rabbi Yudah says, like Zvom ben Dan. Not exactly Zvom ben Dan, he taught him everything, but yet he's teaching Chumash. So it's much my grandfather's chiv to teach even his grandson Chumash. I, we say over here that you don't have to teach him, just teach your son. If you teach your son, it's as if you taught all the generations that follow. The answer is, it's a machlokas. The Rabbi Yudah says, this the the price that he just brought he quoted says you just have to teach your son and your son will teach all the other generations will teach his son and so on so if you teach your son it's as if you taught all the generations however beautiful shmuel helps no a different tana it's a machlok it's the tanya you're supposed to teach your son's torah how do we know even grandsons oh so if we only say i would say maybe only your sons uh, how do I know the grandsons are included? You're supposed to be, make it known to your grandsons as well, your sons and your grandsons. So why does the Pesach say there's an exclusion? Only B'nechem and not somebody else. The answer is uh, That's how we know that there's no chiv to turn Torah. It's a nice thing if you could teach Torah to your daughters also, but it's not a chiv to teach Torah because the chiv is Remember Shuvah Levi. If you teach your grandson Torah, this obviously goes with the idea. Well, it, actually, he could, he could, um, you could say that he could hold like Shuvah Levi could hold either one. So clear, clear, we have machlokus. Do you have to teach your grandson, or don't you have to teach your grandson? All right. So the machlokus Shuvah Levi says, uh, "Pardon." That's right. Example. That's right. Right. That's right. That's also. 
it's all good. It's all good. But she might be saying, if you do teach your son Torah, even if he held that there's no chiv to teach your grandson, if you teach your Torah, Malava Kosov, says, as if you accepted it from Harsinai yourself, because it says, make it known to your sons and to your grandsons. The Samachlein, right after the next post, says, the day that you stood before God, so it, to say that if you teach your grandsons, as if you stood at Har Sinai. And like Kurt says, the best way to teach is by example. So when they see that you get up in the morning and you go to the Shear, they'll also follow. That's also a way to teach them Torah. Because of Kurt. <laughs> I always said, I always said that you know, people say, you know, oh, you know, you know, what do you do it so early in the morning? You know, in the morning is nobody bothers you. There's no, no, there's no competition from you know television or phone calls and everybody else. Everybody else is sleeping, right? So I said that you know, no matter what, um, no matter what uh, characteristic or poor characteristics I have, you know, I have a temper or this, I'm impatient, whatever it is. I don't always set a good example, but at least I said when the kids grew up, they know that if they get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. Their father's learning, you know, at least that, that example that they'll see. Rabchia Bar Abba, Ashkel Shuban Levi, story of Rabchia Bar Abba, founder of Shuban Levi, the Shadi Disna Arisha, he put like a shmata on his head. In other words, instead of putting on his regular hat or his yarmulke, whatever he wore, he quickly like threw something on. You know, you ever have like, you know, uh, your wife is uh, running to the door and your head isn't covered, she just throws something on her head. He threw some shmata on his head. He took a, he took a, a small child to the base to, to the shul to the base class. That's where they learned Torah. That's where their school was. You know they didn't have like today's school buildings. You know they learned in the shul. Amalei, Michael, hi. What are you rushing? You rushed out. Amalei, me zutter my. Is it a small thing that it says in the Torah about datum levanecha? It says if you teach your children with some chle yom asher matot neisham lekecha b'chorei. Is it a small thing? This that the Torah says if you teach your children, it's as if you stood at Har Sinai. Is it a small thing? So he says that, you know, that's a, that's a small thing. Of course, I had to take him to school, so I didn't have time to get dressed, et cetera. He, just, he says he, he, he just quickly put something on. Here's the Amma Rosho. So he didn't want to go with a, an uncovered head. You know, Shemiyar, to let's blow the wedding. You ran out like you're not properly dressed. He says that a small thing, Hashem said, teaching. In other words, teaching Torah does not necessarily mean that you sit and learn with him. You took him to school. That's also Torah. You set an example. That's also teaching him Torah. He conveyed us once. <laughs> Once from Chia Baraba saw that lesson from Shubin Levi. Rabbi Shubin Levi was the one who just said, if you teach your grandchildren Torah, it's as if you stood at Arsinai. So <laughs> once uh, uh, Rabbi Chia Baraba saw Shubin Levi doing that, he says, come on to the Nuka. Maybe that was his grandchild or his child. Even maybe it was his grandchild. That's Rabbi Shubin Levi. So you're supposed to teach your grandchildren. He helped. Like, isn't it true today that many grandparents uh, drive their help taking their kids to the grandchildren to school and home from school. They do that, right? Because once uh, Rabbi uh, Rab Baraba saw Rabbi Shubham Levi doing that, he himself, Rabbi Baraba, lo tom umza, he didn't eat breakfast, ad the mikri until he reviewed the, the uh, he learned that the, uh, he reviewed the homework of his, uh, of the child in the house, of the child in the house, he reviewed the homework, and most of it, he added another pasuk, you know, as he went ahead with, made a laning for the the next bus, you know, he did the same thing. He didn't eat umsa. They used to have like, uh, well, maybe the goyim took that that um, custom of bacon and eggs, you know, for breakfast because he said they had roast. They used to eat roasted meat for breakfast in the morning. That was their custom. He says he didn't eat anything. He didn't eat until he learned a little bit with the children in the morning. He also did not taste anything in the morning. He didn't have any roasted meat until uh, until he bought until he took the kids to the to the uh, to the base manager. Amrav Safa Mishim of Shubem Chananya. Might have said the Pusik says, Vishinantam Levanecha. That's a strange lesson, Vishinantam. Vishinantam is like Shani. So it should say, Vishinitem, teach them a second, or uh, teach them, teach them uh, a second time. If we translate Vishinantam as teach them diligently, and it means like putting an emphasis on learning. I'll take Vishinantam Ela Vishilashtem. Since it didn't say Vishinitem a second time, but rather more, even more than that, Vishilashtem learned a third time. What, what does that mean by that? You should split learning among your years. Now you'll ask right away, but you're going to ask right away. Divide, divide learning in your lifetime. Divide learning. Shlish Mikra, a third in Chomish. Shlish B'Mishra, a third in Mishnayis. Shlish B'Talmud, and a third in Talmud, in Gemara. Gemara meaning like we learned, discussing the Mishnayis, stories, fables, uh, in between Mishnayis, 
between uh, Maram and Tanam, etc. All that's a Tamid. It's not a third of way. So you can mark it sounds like you know, one third of your life, Homish, one third of your life, Mishnah, one third of the Talmud. Says Gora, of course, Mia Dea Kamacha. How do you know how many years? So you say, okay, 40 years for Homish, 40 years for this, 40 years for that. But not everybody lives 120. How do you know how many years? Everybody lives a different amount of time. So let's read Yome by the day. So Rashi learns Yome Yome Ashavua, meaning Sunday, Monday, Homish, let's say, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, Mishnah, and Thursday, Friday, Gemara. I guess Shabbos, you can review everything. That's how Rashi seems to understand the Gemara. But Tosa says, no. Within each day, even that's a problem. Tosa says, How do you know you live the whole week? Right? You're supposed to be said a third, a third, and a third. How do you know you're going to live the whole week? So he says it by the day. You know, not like you're living the day either, but at least each day. But FIFA, so, so it's split it up a third way. But Tosa also says, This is why uh, that's that, you know, uh, uh, that why we, the minute is today, that before davening, before Psychra Zimra, Karbonos, we have everything in there. We have Chumash. Mishnah, Gemara, all that's in there. So you're covered already. Before we even start, before Rabbi Shmuel Omer, we've already got it covered. That's one way to do it. And um, uh, that's why, uh, uh, and, and so others say, that the Talmud Babli, which we're learning now, has everything in it. How <laughs> You hardly go by a Gemara, a page of Gemara, without learning some Chomish, Mishnah, and Gemara. So it's all included in there. Tosh explains that nicely. He says, Gemara goes on to say, Lefichah, this is a new thing. Lefichah, Nikur, we shown himself, we're talking about the Chomish, that's why the original, the early rabbis were called sofrim. Sofrim means to count. We call a sofer a scribe, or tamchach means to count. Sofrim calls this, they counted all the letters in the Torah. Now, as we'll see, there are there were different uh, girsas of how, exactly how to count. But he goes through this uh, the, the way the way it seems that the, what, the count in the Gemara doesn't seem to be the way we have it, or it could be different girsas in the Gemara. But we have this called shabbatah shayom. They used to say. Vav the the gachon chatzur shalosios shall say for Torah. Pasuk says kol holechal gachon any an animal that that goes on its on its belly. That the vav and gachon is exactly halfway through the Torah. That's the halfway of the half of the letters in the Torah. If you I said before that next week we're going to have Mitzvah Hashem the halfway point of of, of the of uh, this you know um, uh, tw- twenty center twenty seven hundred and eleven uh, pages in shas and uh, shas that we learned. So 1,355 and a half is the halfway point. We're going to come to that Mitzvah next week. So here also he says that that uh, the, the above there is halfway in the letters. The Rosh Darash, also a Pasuk in Vayikra, that's halfway in the term of, of uh, words, of words in the Torah. This Galach, that Pasuk, when you're supposed to uh, shave, Shal Psukim, that's halfway through the number of Psukim in the Torah. Yechar Semena Chazer Mi Ya'ar, that's a Pasuk in Tilim. I in the Ya'ar, Chazer Shalom. The I in there is halfway through Tilim, presumably in letters. Which is a pasuk in in um, in Tilim, which we say several times a day, right? Chetzia the psukim, halfway through the psukim in in um, in. Is this like a new thing? He's just telling you, talking about Chumash and uh, Tanakh. So he tells you these are a way of counting. That's why they're called counting. Tos adds on. They're also called sofim because we like to put everything in numbers. It's easy to remember that way. For example, Avos Malachus is 39, 40 less one, right? Uh, four Avos Nazikin. Uh, we used to count things. I, it's, it's a good idea to count things. Like, if you have something to do, you say, oh, I got four things to do, you'll remember it better that way. Bar of Yosef, Bab the Gichon, you said the Bab the Gachon is halfway in the letters of the Torah. Me high gisa, me high gisa. Well, where is the Bab? You can't split the Bab. Is that in the first half or the second half? So he's on my leg. They say, Sefer Torah, and then no, let's bring a Sefer Torah. We'll count it. What do you ask me, gosh, like that? Go through the Sefer Torah, you'll see. Milo Omar Rav Baruchana, didn't Rav Baruchana say, Lo Zazim Shemat Shebi, Sefer Torah, Umanum. Uh, now Rashi says Lo Zazim, I don't know what they, what, what uh, period, what's the, where that story took place, but the Gemara and Shabbos also refers to that. Lashon, lo zazim isham, achi be yisur v'tar umanim. They brought us up and they count them. Amalei, so why don't you, why don't you say, uh, why don't you just count? You're asking me a question. Is the vav in the first half of the letters, or the second half of the letters? Amalei, inu b'kiva chaseres. Yes, the earlier ones, they knew they were b'kiyim in letters that are missing, in letters that we pronounce even though they're missing. Or you say it's extra less. I don't know, we're not so bucky. In other words, we may not know, so you can't prove from our Sefer Torah. Bar Yosef, this galach me'agis or me'agis again is that word in the Torah, which is this uh, galach is halfway through the psukim, not the words, but the psukim is that in the first half of the second. If I'm a psukim mia less of limno. Can't we even at least? Okay, maybe the letters there's extra letters, missing letters. Can't tell. What about the psukim? Can't we just count psukim? Psukim amalukim. We're not just giving the kim. The chiyasa rabacha. Bar Ada, when he came from Eretz Yisrael, he said, "Bamrava paski lahai kral l'fasu psukim." In Eretz Yisrael, 
they divided the following Pesach into three Pesachim. In other words, that Pesach, we have it as one Pesach, and Eretz Yisrael, they divided up into three. So even the number of Pesachim is not exact. Three lines from the bottom of the page in Rav. How many Pesachim are in the Torah? How many uh, sentences are in the Torah? I don't know if I said the word before, sent sentences, but it's okay. And before, maybe I said it wrong. Verses. Uh, uh, verses or sentences, right. So, he says 5,888 are the number of sukkim in the Torah. Okay. Yes, that, now on the side, if you look in the side, it says, that we have all the of the Torah, 800, and then, hey, 845. Not 888, 845. I'm not sure that there's another set that it's 842, 5842. These things will make enough mean. There are some who say that, you know, if you if you count the psukim, we come out uh, now like in Hazinu, meaning if you count all the words, where are we now? In Nisav and Hazinu, is where we're near the end. And some say that's really the number of years that the world's going to exist. Because, you know, the world's supposed to be for 6,000 years. We're, we're starting Mesh Shem next uh, Shabbos, 5,784, right? So we're getting near the end. When is the world going to end? And we're going to go into the Shabbos of 1,000 years. When is that? All these things we don't know. But some say that it, it's, it, there's a hint in each Pasuk in the Chumash. In other words, when the number of Sukkim, if there's 5,888, the world will last a little bit longer than if there's 5,000. Uh, you know, uh, uh, 5,842. And we're up to 5,000. It's not going to go to 6,000 because then you'll know. You know it's next year. That's it. You know, the world's over. But uh, we're getting near the end, right? It's, it's, it's... <laughs> yeah. Avoid, avoid those long-term bonds, right? Now you listen, you look on the internet, you'll say there are people who say there's going to be a nuclear war with Russia and America soon. Who knows, right? We don't know. Anyway, yes, I'll tell you. So he says, yes, I'll tell him, Shmona, Tillam has eight sukkah more than the Chumash. Now, this Bechlal doesn't make sense. Tosa says right away, yeah, so even, if, even if you divide the sukkah and, and Tillam to three letter to, to three words apiece, different ways to divide up uh, divide up the um, uh, Tillam, Tillam also, we have 150, uh, you know, Prakim in it. There's also, uh, you could say Shermas is one way, you know, Shermas, but the, the Goyim read it also, you know, Rabbi Wine tells a story about he built a shul in Miami, and uh, you know they, it was a beautiful edifice, and they wanted to come. They brought, a, a church group came with nuns and everything. They wanted to see the shul, and they said, uh, "Do you mind if we say some psalms? You know, in your sanctuary." He says, "Well, can I see it first? It says they had a book of psalms, but at the end of each one was, you know, the Holy Ghost at the, uh, you know, in the name of the Trinity. They added on that little piece, you know. But they apparently also have the 150 proc. But, it, but it's not. Again, it's not clear." You know how the prokim certainly are not uh, are not uh, necessarily from 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 uh, Sinai. How it's divided up, and here we see there's different cheetahs, How many letters there were? How many psukim there are? And the Tillam has more Tillam has more verses than the Chumash. How does that make sense at all? It's not clear. It could be the different years here. So he says that there's five thousand eight hundred eighty-eight psukim in the Torah. Tillam has eighty more, right? Yes, look, Tillam Shmona and Chasim and Yom Shmona. Yom has eight eight sentences less. Also, not clear how that works out. And the different years is apparently different. There's going to be different years in our too. You see the Grotik, the whole thing also, Chasr Daniel, maybe it's miss, missing some, uh, you know, some some of it. Uh, some It's not clear how this uh, how these numbers work out. Tan Rabbanam. Does it really make a difference? It doesn't make a difference. It doesn't make a difference. We have our Masora, bring that even down the Masora from Rabroyer, that this is the numbers that we have, and we go with that. Tan Rabbanam. Vishinantam. Vishinantam. What does Yishinat mean? You should teach them diligently, learn well. The Torah should be sharp in your mouth. Somebody asks you something, I'll take it. Don't stutter. I don't know. I'm not sure about that. You should know. Don't, don't stutter. Tell them right away. Somebody asks you shyly, tell them right away. Tosh says over here, what do you mean? Tosh says that if you ask him something, you should say, I didn't learn that or whatever. You know, like he should be modest. He should say, oh yeah, I just finished all this whole thing. I know it well. That's if you ask them, did you learn uh, Masech and Megillah? Do you know Masech and Megillah? Well, you shouldn't say, I know it well. You just say, yeah, I've, I've looked at it. You shouldn't be a Balgaiv about that, but if they ask you a specific question, a Shaila, you should know how to answer that. That's when you should not know it diligently. Tomah Elamor Mariachin, and Pasuk says, and Pasuk says, and Pasuk and Mishnah, and Mo'ala Chachma, 
tells Chachma Wisdom in the Torah, Achosia, you are my sister, meaning just like a person knows that his sister is forbidden to him, right? That's an erva. That's how he should know the Torah. That's how he should know the Torah. Just like you know, everybody knows their sister is forbidden. You can't sleep with your sister. So that's you should know the Chachma. But Omer Pasuk says, Kishrei al etzbosecha, bind them to your to your fingers. Know that well. Kis maluch liba, kis maluch libecha. Write them on the tablet of your heart. In other words, that you know very well. They have a part of your of your being. But Omer, like arrows in the hands of a uh, of a mighty uh, of a mighty soldier came b'nei So should be the b'nei my son, my Nurum are the young students. Talmid of Shalotam Akuyim Beno. They're called your children. Your students are called your children. So he says the same way. You know, just like that's how sharp, like sharp arrows in the hands of a of a uh, warrior. So should be the uh, your students. They should know. But Omer Givarm Shnunim. The um, arrows of the warrior. Are sharp. Uh, your arrows are sharp. Nations will fall before you. Meaning, you should not answer everybody. Not to put them down. No, what? Not not to belittle them, but simply know how to answer everything. Everything should be sharp in your mind. But Omer says, Happy is the one who filled his quiver from them with these sharp arrows. Meaning, sharp that you know the Torah very well. The Pasuk goes on, he will not be embarrassed. When they will speak with the enemies at the gate. What does that mean, speak with the enemies? Even if a father and his son learning in Torah, studying in Torah, or a rabbi tamido, they're learning in Torah, meaning like at the base, at the base medrash. They become enemies with one another because they're fighting and learning. You think that's a shot. You don't know what you're talking about. You're crazy. You know, they go back and forth uh, fighting with one another. They don't leave until they become, they love one another. In other words, at the end, they find peace among themselves. The Apostle says, as Sefer Melchamo Sashem, right? In what my, but some Shukas, right? Michael, Michael, Shukas. It says, as that Sefer Melchamo Sashem, the, the the war of of Hashem, meaning safer. The war that comes out through learning Torah through the Sefer ends off with Esvahe Basufa. I'll take Basufa El Basufa. At the end, they will behave like uh, Ahava. They will love one another. I saw this with my own eyes in Yeshiva, where there were two brothers. One of whom is a Rosh Yeshiva today. He's the Rosh Yeshiva today. Every day they fought. In learning, they sat and they started second Seder at 2 30 and they started learning and then they started fighting with mother till they pushed one another. And at the end of the Seder at seven o'clock, we went from 2 30 till seven. And, uh, um, they weren't talking, I'm not talking to you ever again. <laughs> one sat at one end, one moved to the other end. The next day, the whole thing started all over again. They saw you know, every every day was the same thing. They beat one another. Today, one of them is Rosh Hashiva. Tell her about it. And the other one, I don't know where the other one is. Maybe that's. It says, "Basamtam esrei ela." Basamtam you can translate as "samtam," a, a a perfect remedy. Samtam, sam is a is an elixir, a a, a poison or a, or a, a medicine or you know whatever a remedy. Tam a complete one. Nimshal Torah kesam chayim. The Torah is compared to a uh, elixir of life. Mashal uh, like a person shehi a person beat his son. Makmidol he gave him a terrible wound. And he put a plaster, a bandage on his on his wound. As long as you have this bandage, you'll be fine. Eat whatever your pleasure is. Drink whatever you want. Something you could wash in hot or cold water and drink whatever you want. Even uh, Rashi says, even um, even tvash, even honey, which was considered all uh, uh, all kinds of sweet things, which were considered. Uh, injurious to the wound, but as long as you have the bandage on you, you're okay. You don't have nothing. If you if you take away the bandage, it's going to grow sores. Sores are going to are going to come there. You got a problem. So Hashem compared. Hashem told us you have the Torah in the same way. Compared to a to a wound on a child. Bini, Barasi Eight Sahara, famous line. I built the Eight I I made. I created the Eight Sahara. The evil inclination, and I created the Torah as an antidote to the Eight Sahara. If you study Torah, if you act you will not be given over to the hand of the Eight Sahara. 
Hello in Tatif's ace. If you do good, Sa'is, Rashi says it's Tisnase, you will rise up above the Azar. In Ainata Oskim, if you don't study Torah, Ata Musar, you'll be given a retention Emar, La Pesa Khatas Rabat. The the uh, evil inclination, the Aitzar Hara, which is also equated with the Satan, is crouching at the door, right? The crouching at the door. Below Od, El Shikoma Samatno uh is he is totally preoccupied with trying to get you to do sin. So he desires for you. But if you want, you can rule over the Yitzhar Shinemar. The Yitzhar is so bad, so difficult, so strong. Even Hashem who created him, called him evil. Because the inclination of the heart of a person is always evil. A person has a, a good inclination and a bad inclination. The key is, if you want the good inclination to overpower the bad one, you have to study Torah. The Yitzhar heart of a person renews itself each day. The entire day, not just each day. Every hour in the day, not just each day, every hour of the day. He tries to kill him. The Russia looks upon the righteous person. The evil person looks upon the righteous person, the evil person being being uh, here referring to the Yitzhahara. Umavak Shemisa tries to kill him. The Il Malik Ashbach Razar, for Hashem wouldn't help him. He wouldn't be able to, uh, to, to, to survive against him. He wouldn't be able to, uh, um, to you know, to, to maintain himself. Shemar wouldn't be, wouldn't be sustainable. Shemar, Elohim lo Yazarim, that Hashem will not leave him, will not forsake him in the hand of the Yitzhahara. Thunder of Shmol. Bini, my son, in Pagabacham and Nubalzev, if this repulsive wretch meets you, the Siyat Sahara, Meshchel base Medish, pull him to the base Medish. You ever be have a problem here? Pull him to the base Medish, learn there. In Evanu, if he's as strong as a rock, he'll be dissolved. In Barzal, if he's iron, who misbotes, he will he will shiver into little pieces. Shinamar, hello, Kodvarai, Kraishnim Hashem. Hashem said, My words are like fire, who kapatish yifutasela, and like the hammer that breaks the stone. In heaven, who is a stone, Mimuach, Shinamar, he'll be, he'll be dissolved by the Torah, Shinamar, Bahoy called Same Lukulamayim. Whoever searched to go to water, water is, Torah is compared to water. Water uh, wears away the, uh, wears away the stone, dissolves it. Bomer Pussy says, Abonim Shachumayim, as the Pussy says, stones that are worn away by the water. So if he's like, even if he's just like a stone, he'll be, he'll be uh, worn away by the Torah. So bring him into the base message. The Mishnah said, no, or actually, the Bryce has said, right? The Mishnah didn't say that. We just said the, that the uh, mitzvahs that a father do for a son, that women are part of from, that <laughs> mitzvahs that a father do for a son, women are part of. What are they? The Bryce went on to say, uh, circumcision, being podium, teaching him Torah, where do we get that from? So, Lasio Isha, it says, in, in uh, where's the Mishaya? Um, no, it's, I think, in Kunashim Baulidu Banim. Take wives and have boys, have children, ubanos, right? And have children, boys and girls. The cool of Nechem Dashim and take for your sons, uh, wives, women, and give your daughters over to men. You can give your son, give him the car, give him the Corvette and the wallet and tell him, you know, go after some girls. You know, you'll, you'll, you'll be able to find a girl for your, for your husband, for your son. It's easy to marry off a son. I mean, what is he supposed to do? Take him to take her to meet men. I mean, that, that would be improper. Pardon? Sell her. Pardon? Her. Sell her. <laughs> sell her, sell her right. Yeah, yeah, right. You could sell her, right? That's true. That's, we're not talking, but it's not a good idea, right? It's not a good idea, right? Uh, that's the only person should only do that, as we said, the, the, only when he's poor, right? When he can't do this, he's, he's forced when he doesn't have any money. But here, if he has money, what should, how should he find a, a son in law? Nitla Midi, give her some, uh, some, you know, so give her some things, nice things, ornaments, love shit, and dress her properly, Messiah, and give her assets, give her things, jewelry, etc. In other words, you can make her desire, you can make her desirable by dressing her nicely and giving her money and giving her the ornaments, etc., so that people will want to marry her. But Lamda Om is teaching him a craft. Then how do you know you're supposed to teach your son a gift? Um says, Re'echaim Pasukim Kahelis, right? Pasukim Kahelis says, Re'echaim. In, see a livelihood in Isha with the woman Asher after that you love. In Isha, Mom, we're talking about literally a woman. So, like we just said before from the Pasuk of Kahu, Nashim, Validu, Banam, and Nashim. So, just like 
and he saw this an obligation to marry off your son. And it says, Rechaim and Misha Shahafta, just like just like uh, with the wife that you that you love, you should also teach a livelihood. Rechaim and Misha Shahafta, Imisha, Mamish Kim Shahibla CO, Isha, just like you have to marry marry him off, because it says you have to get a wife, right? Misha, just like you have to marry off your son. So the same way you have to have a livelihood for your son. Um in Tori, if if when the lush of of Rechaim and Isha Shahaf does not mean literally a woman. But it's a it's an example. It's a, it's a metaphor for Torah. In Torah, if you're trying to Torah learn Torah, so Shem Chavnis like in Klip to teach him Torah, as we saw from the Pasuk before. So either way, just like you're supposed to take a, a wife for your son, you're supposed to teach him Torah, right? So the same way, you're supposed to teach him Torah, right? So the same way, you earn him a livelihood because it says earn a livelihood with with a wife. In other words, get get a get a wife and get a livelihood. It's just like you have to get him a wife or learn him or teach him Torah. Same way you're supposed to teach him a livelihood. Yesh Omrim. Some say even you're supposed to teach him how to swim. By time, it's, it's going to save his life one day. If the boat capsizes or he's stuck in the water, this could this is a cause of question of life or death. If you don't teach him a craft, you're teaching him to steal. This is like I think I'm not really teaching him to steal. Like Mara said that for Elikiyum Lamdo Lissus. Mamina, what's the same Tanakam Rav Yudah? Tanakam said you have to teach him to teach him a craft. Rabbi Yudah says, if you don't teach him that, you teach him with us. Let's say you taught him a business. You got him an MBA, right? Taught him business. You didn't really teach him a craft, like a true, you know, how to, you didn't teach him how to sew or how to be a bricklayer or how to do some, uh, or a diamond cutter, some trick, some craft that's that's always a person can, can, can do, or it being a doctor or a dentist, something that we do. But if you teach him business, sometimes you won't have any money to do business. Tana Common says, that's good enough. Rabbi Yudah says, no. If you didn't teach him a real craft, you're not going to teach him because maybe he won't be able to do business one day. Komitz is a So the second part of the mission says it's as really the Komitz is all the mitzvahs of the father on the son. And we already explained that the first part is referring to mitzvahs that the father should do for a son. So the second part obviously would be all mitzvahs that a son should do for his father. But the Gemara goes through it. My Komitz is Let's understand this second line in the mission. Even the Komitz says the Machayev Ava If you're talking about mitzvahs that a father has to do for a son. So no, why would it say Nashim Chayavos, right? The first part of the mission says, if it's, if it's we explain the first part of the mission, means mitzvahs that a father do for a son, only the father, not the mother. So what, what does it mean, kol mitzvah, ava lebein, echa nashim, echa nashim, both men and women? If we're talking about mitzvahs that a father do for a son, that's only the father, not the mother. So I can see Nashim Chayavos, v'tayin lor, av chayv v'no, lamolo, v'toso, all those things that a father do for a son, av vein, imolo, as we said before, two days ago, amra v'yura, ha'vikomer, or yesterday, rather. I mean, you're half of it's what he means. Mitzvahs that are on a son to do for his father, right? Mitzvahs that are for the father, that is that is incumbent on the son to do for the father. Both men and women are responsible. Tanina, we had this tomorrow, so yesterday. Tanina, our mission is a proof to what the Bryce has said. How do we know that, that we know that a father, that a son has to, uh, has to honor and fear his parents? Isha min a hanuina rikshu omer tiro. It says tiro u. Isha mam tiro tiro you. That's plural. Are a So we're speaking to both a man and a woman. In came out the moment ish. So I say ish. Ish the big minas is a man always has the ability to to uh, honor his parents because he's free to do what he wants. He has nobody ruling over him. Isha ain't sikir alasos. Eshu shusachem. A woman doesn't always have the ability. If she's married, her first obligation is to her husband. So if her husband needs her, and she can't necessarily go take care of her parents if her husband needs her, but a man. Can always always has the ability to go to his parents. I'm Rav Yidav Rav, and I'm Rav Neskash Shem Shem. But if she's divorced, or the same thing she was never, she's not married at all for whatever reason, then they're both equal. They both have the same responsibility to take care of the parents. Tana Rabbanim, Nemek Kavanis Havi Chavesim Bechad says, honor your parents, your father and your mother. Nemek Kavanis Hashem Alcha, honor God from your assets. Hish Bekasik Kibur Rav Eim Kibur Rav Makom. The Kavanis compared right, which said they're equal. Teach honoring your parents, honoring God. Similarly, never ishing them to row. You're supposed to fear your parents. Never as Hashem will get Fear God. Same thing. Both are tapping and worship and, and serve Him. Ish because of moras of the aim, fearing one's parents. The moras to fearing God. The moras of makom fearing God. Never right. So you see that all the same, right? That that that, that, that whatever is said to one to, for the parents, same thing for God. It says fear fear your parents, fear God. Right? Ish because of moras of the aim, the moras of makom. Never it says makal of the emo. It's forbidden to curse your parents. Uh, most humans will be, that's punishment of death. And you curse God also, it would be a terrible sin, and you're high of death for that. 
of Cursing your parents is like cursing God. Notice all the you're treating your parents and treating God as the same. Obviously, when it comes to hitting one's parents, possibly Levada EF sure can't do that because you can't hit God. There's no way to hit God. God isn't isn't uh, hittable. And it should be that way that we have to honor and fear and refrain from cursing both parents and God. Because all three of them together created you. A famous line. There are three partners in creating man. Rashi says that Bryce says in the Nida that a man gives him gives the child the white part of his body. The Isha, the, the mother gives him the red part, the blood presumably said the Koshbaku blows in in the Shama, the ability to see and to hear and to speak, etc. But that was how the Murdoch in St. Louis, uh, every bar mitzvah, he said, there are three shitman of them, the Tata, the Mama, and the Abish, the three people created, three, the three partners in creating a man. Uh, so this man shot him, Gumar goes, Mizan shot him, Mahabras of this, if he honors his parents, I'm going to spark him on Elam, Kilu, Dark, and Benayam. If a person honors his parents, Hashem says, it's as if I, if, as if I dwelt in their house, the Chibduni, and they honored me. Uh, that's because we're all part of the same, same, the, the same uh, triumvirate, whatever they created a person. Tanya, Rabbi, every Amar, Golik, we do all day. It was revealed to God. God knew. It's normal for a man, for a person, or a son, a son, a child, let's say, call him a child, to honor his mother more than his father. And they, because she helps him. She entices him. She gives him food, candy. She's the one who takes care of him. Let's call it pampers him. She pampers him. The mother pampers him. So it's a, so he's more likely to honor his mother. He feels closer to his mother. If he looks at the keep it up. Never Hashem said, no, no, no. Your 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 instinct may be to honor your mother more, but Hashem Telling you no, your father as much as your mother. The God of is also obvious. Look, before God who created the world, a son is a child that normally fears his father more than his mother. because he teaches him Torah and says, look at all these things you can't do. So he's more scared of his father. He may not be be doing everything properly. So normally, it's normal to fear a father more than a mother. Therefore, therefore, Hashem uh, proceeded, and, and when He get, when He when Hashem gave us the law that you're not supposed to uh, that you're supposed to fear your parents. What does the pasuk say? Each emo tiro. You should fear your mother. Your instinct is to fear your father more. So He's telling you no. The fear of the mother and father are equal. And the honor of the father and the mother are equal. Even though your instinct is to honor your mother more, no, your father the same. Your instinct is to fear your father more, no, fear them both, treat them both the same way. And if you do that, it's like you treated Hashem in that good manner. All right, we'll pick it up here tomorrow, Mitzvah Hashem. Have a good day.